now we can do the formal welcome. And we have everybody in the units to submit. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mark Mahali, Mark. and I'm here to, because I feel like I should be and to observe. Okay, good. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Introduce everybody so I feel like you should be able to participate. Nice to meet you. Okay, so yeah, welcome everybody. We're starting at 5.49 with our actual business. I just wanted to say a couple of things before we get started that as I read the packet, I was so inspired by the work that we're doing. I, I, my heart was, I, I was really, so I just wanted to thank the administrators and start by saying thank you mm -hmm. to all of you. The central, the central administration team, Megan, the principals, it was just so nice to have a window. I know that we're talking about it, so I'm not going to spend all the time on that, but I, I feel like us as a board uh, have been learning on how to be better leaders too, and the board leadership matters too, and it all fit in the thing that you guys are doing. And you know, I think it drove us to make sure that we had the necessary resources to support the work that we're doing and we have the vision to really create change in the equity level and things like that. You know, like. Sharing thoughts. So, thank you. I'm in a little trouble hearing you. Oh, okay. I'll try a little bit. Yeah. Jonas, could you hear me? Yeah. I always forget about projecting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm here for your voice. Word. Yeah. Thank you. I need. Mean, yeah. That's why I was saying. That's why I was saying. Is there not a theater performance? <laughs> you don't have. You do it over your hands. Okay. Is a section of guests. We did it before uh, Susanna and Jenny were hoping to sit with us too, but yeah. We like being in the back. <laughs> any 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 changes to the agenda? Okay. Just a question, are the students able to make it tonight? So well, yeah, I thought I actually thought they were gonna be here for five thirty. For five thirty, yeah, yeah, they ran it for a week today. And they do have a student report, so um, yeah, they and they it. wanted to be part of like one the yeah. Yeah, so I'm not sure what happened with the 5.30 part, but yes, they are. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, it's not quite six. Yeah, they might have no, Did they have a game? Uh, practice, I think, she said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any public comments? Mm -hmm. That's public. Did I with that? Do right. you have anything? Good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to start right at the end. Or I'm going to talk to yeah, no, thank you. Well, you're getting that much. Oh, yeah, thank you. That's very good to have. Yep. In case you want to follow along, you can just go to the slide. Thank you. Perfect timing. Yeah. And sorry, I mean, you for a thing. It's Joshua. There's so many Joshua. Oh, yeah. It's five of the same card. It is for five. I guess five. That's six in my first year. Wow. Wow. Yes. Oh, and I just saw it. Oh, wow. If you go to slide six, you know, there's, there's a link to a video in here that they might want to just get opened up on. Oh, I don't know. Even see it. Just click right on there. I feel like it's a nice. Uh, because I have edit privileges, to do it differently, I guess. Oh, that's all right. It came up. See that how it popped right. down at the bottom of the. Oh, right here. Gotcha. I would have been talking. And then. Uh, you can mute while well, it does this because it starts with like an app. Yep. Online and I put it to Google fast tracking to becoming a teacher. A four year degree not in my manner. Okay, and then you'll have to start with the schoolwork and then it starts in the middle. Well, oh, right there? Yep, that's okay. perfect. And we want to jump back. Yeah. Into it. And you want to be a this one? Uh, no, we'll start at slide one, but when we get there, we'll switch over to the, yep. the video. <laughs> All right. So the clicker is there if you want to just hit your kind of dance. Otherwise, it's you're fine. welcome to tell me how to. Okay. I'm going to try to do it on my own. <laughs> um, good evening, everybody. Uh, annually, the budget development process at Washington Central begins with budget training for the board. 
We hope this ensures all board members begin the process with a general understanding of how the budget is developed, the complexities of the Vermont education funding system, and how each of those things impact property taxes in the individual towns. We always want to keep students at the center of all of our work in the budget process. So we will begin each budget session reminding ourselves of the district's mission. Uh, Washington Central Unified Union School District exists to nurture and inspire in all students the passion, creativity, and power to contribute to their local and global communities. October 19th, <laughs> the district will kick things off with a board training to explain the budget development process and Vermont's education funding system. This meeting is also when some assumptions used to calculate the FY24 budget draft number one will be decided upon. November 2nd, the board will hold a community forum based on the theme building a budget, uh, building a vision before building a budget. The focus of this forum will be to review the district's current priorities for students and to gather input about what aspects of our district are most meaningful to the community and hear from the public what they believe the board should support in this budget. November 16th, the board will review a level service draft of the FY23-24 budget. The goal of this presentation is to help the board understand what the estimated cost is to support the current programs and services that are happening in our schools and understand some of the budget realities that exist prior to any changes in programming or services. Draft number one will incorporate estimated increases for salaries, benefits, insurance, transportation, and anticipated special education needs. After reviewing budget draft number one, the board will provide the leadership team with ad additional parameters and priorities to include in budget draft number two. Mm -hmm. And December 21st, the FY23-24 budget draft number two will be presented to the board and community at the second community forum. This draft of the budget will include tax rates estimated with the current year local common level of appraisal or CLA state recommended property yield, and updated equalized pupils, the actual local CLA will not be available until January. Community members are encouraged to attend and share their thoughts about this draft. After reviewing budget draft number two, the board will receive additional community input and provide the leadership team with direction to refine the FY23-24 budget in preparation for the final draft. January 18th, the FY23-24 budget draft number three will be presented to the board and community at the third community forum. This draft of the budget will include town tax rate estimates that include the impact of the local CLA. The board invites the community to attend and ask questions. The goal is for the board to approve the final FY24 budget at this meeting in order to warn and prepare for the annual meeting and town meeting day vote. A public hearing will take place on Monday, March 6th, to provide information on the articles to be voted on. The Australian ballot vote will be in each respective town on town meeting day, March 7th. First, let's take a look at where we began last year's budget development process. We started by analyzing changes in enrollment in all schools across the district and identify the impact of those changes on a level funded budget. The overall 5.52% decrease in enrollment reduced the equalized pupil count, which negatively impacted the tax rate before any changes were made to the budget. Additionally, East Montpelier's individualized 4.37% enrollment increase led to the need to fund additional classroom teachers. We have just begun to analyze the current enrollment trends based upon the October 1, 2022 census report, and enrollment has continued to decline in all of our schools. The social and emotional pillar of the moving forward plan for students and staff 
high quality instruction and interventions, differences in performance between different student groups, and aligning priorities between staff, the leadership team, board, and community were all priorities embedded in the FY23 budget development process. These common priorities were established through meetings of the leadership team, staff surveys, school board budget parameters, and community forums. The school board gave the leadership team specific guidance to prioritize MLSS, including professional learning for teachers, invest in targeting efforts against cybersecurity threats, and reinvigorate or boost at least one of the three initiatives, arts and music, outdoor education, or farm to table. The final FY22-23 budget supported additional investments in art, music, special education, classroom teacher, technology, building equipment, building repairs, and capital improvements. Now that we've described how the budget is built at the local level, we need to explore Vermont's education funding system to better understand the journey from budget to tax rate. This video developed by the Vermont School Boards Association is a resource we will use to walk everyone through the system. After the video, we will dive deeper into Washington Central's FY23 budget from a number standpoint. You just play it from, oh, from, from the, the top tab. Thank you. Yeah. Today, we're going to make sense out of Vermont's education funding system. To understand the rationale and purpose of Vermont's current education funding system, you need to step back 20 years to 1997. At that time, communities with the same spending per pupil were subject to dramatically different tax rates. Some Vermonters filed a lawsuit, and the state Supreme Court ruled in Brigham versus State of Vermont that wide disparities in tax burdens due to large differences in property wealth resulted in unequal education opportunity for students based on their residence, a violation of the Vermont state constitution. In response, Vermont's lawmakers enacted the Equal Education Opportunity Act of 1997, commonly known as Act 60. While Act 60 created school quality standards and performance requirements, the biggest change was a shift in responsibility for funding education. The state of Vermont now funds all public school district budgets approved by voters across the state. Features of Act 60 attempted to equalize many factors, student population or school size, local market value of property, student demographics, and student spending. Six years later, lawmakers passed Act 68, which modified the funding formula in hopes of simplifying the process without affecting the intent of the legislation. Equal education opportunity for all of Vermont's students. Vermont pays for education through the state's education fund. There are four primary sources of money that comprise the fund. Revenue transferred from the state's general fund, a portion of general purpose taxes like sales and use, purchasing use, and state lottery. The non-residential education property tax, non-residential property is any property that is not a homestead, businesses, second homes, camps, etc., and the homestead property tax paid by Vermont homeowners, which has two components, payments based either on property value or household income or both. In fiscal year 2018, the expenses paid by the education fund totaled $1.58 billion. Now let's focus on understanding how property taxes are calculated as of fiscal year 2018. The first thing that happens is each district school board begins preparing a budget in the fall for consideration by the voters at annual school district meetings, usually happen on or around town meeting day in March. Once a budget is approved, the state is obligated to fund the district's education spending from the education fund. Education spending is the amount of budgeted expenses minus local revenue and state and federal grants, including things like special education reimbursement, transportation aid, and small school grants. Local revenue may include tuition collected, interest on investments, and surplus carryovers. The amount of education spending for each district begins its homestead tax rate calculation. Next, the district's education spending is divided by the number of equalized pupils attending the district schools. What's an equalized pupil, you may ask? The state adjusts the number of students in a district by factors that reflect costs associated with certain demographics. High school students, for example, generally cost more to educate than elementary students, who in turn cost more than preschool students. English language learners and students from economically deprived backgrounds are weighted more heavily since their education costs are often higher. 
like many of the calculations, this adjustment is made as a way to equalize the impact of dollars in each district. It's important to understand that the homestead tax rate doesn't reflect the total budget presented by the school board and approved by the voters. Homestead tax rates reflect education spending per equalized pupil. In fact, current law requires that school boards present information that specifically correlates the proposed budget to education spending per equalized pupil. Education spending per equalized pupil for each district is then compared to the property dollar equivalent yield. We'll just call that the yield. It's determined by a mathematical calculation of the amount per pupil spending supported each year by a fixed homestead tax rate of $1 per $100 of value. By way of example, if $1 tax rate would yield spending per equalized student of $10,000 and a district presents a budget that it has spending per equalized pupil at $15,000, then that district tax rate would be $1.50. But wait, there's more. The final step in determining the homestead tax rate is the state's method of equalizing property value by comparing actual sales data to assess values in each town. The result is the common level of, of appraisal, or CLA. A ratio applied to the tax rate to normalize home values. Those are the components of the basic formula for calculating homestead property tax. Education spending divided by the equal number of pupils divided by the yield equals the tax rate. The tax liability is calculated by dividing the homestead tax rate by the common level of appraisal and then multiplying by the assessed value divided by 100. Let's make some sense of this, okay? Meet Jane. She lives in St. Albans City which is a part of the newly unified Maple Run Unified School District. She's voted in support of the school board's proposed budget, as did the majority of the voters in the district. Maple Run's fiscal year 2018 education spending was $37,952,236 for 2,527.3 equalized pupils. So education spending per pupil was $15,016.91. Jane and her friends approved a fiscal year 2018 budget that was 47.8% higher than the yield of $10,160 set by the legislature. As a result, their homestead property tax rate increased by that amount to $1.47.8 per $100 of assessed property value. So what did that mean for Jane? Her house in St. Albans City was assessed for $251,300, where the Vermont Tax Department established the CLA at 94.99%, meaning that the average assessed value of properties in the city that sold over the past three years was 94.99% of the actual selling prices. To figure out Jane's education portion of her property tax bill, the tax rate of $1.47.8 is divided by the CLA of 94.99%, then multiplied by the assessed value of the house divided by 100, because the tax rate is applied per $100 value. So, her education tax for the year was $3,910.11. Jane knows that's a pretty good deal for the education her kids get at BFF. But what she can't figure out is why her brother, Dick, who lives a couple miles away on Lake Road and whose kids also go to BFA, paid less in education taxes, even though their house is assessed at a higher value than hers. It's assessed at $258,400. The answer is that Dick lives in St. Albans Town, which had a different CLA. So after dividing the $1.47.8 district tax rate by the town CLA of 103.86% and multiplying by his $258,400 assessment divided by 100, his tax bill was $3,677.21. Dick and Jane know that some people pay education taxes based on income and not property value, like their parents, Barbara and Harold, who recently retired and still live in the home where they raised their kids in Fairfield. Unlike Jane or Dick and their partners, Barbara and Harold are on a fixed income that falls below the household income threshold established by law, so their tax calculation works different. Their total household income, pensions and social security, was $82,275 below the state's household income threshold of $141,000, so they qualified for a homestead tax adjustment. The base tax rate for the income sensitivity program is 2% of income. Like the property value yield we talked about for Jane, there's also an income yield. And the tax rate still depends on what a district spends per equalized pupil. In fiscal year 2018, the income yield was $11,099. So the Maple Run Unified School District per pupil spending of $15,016.91 was 25.24% above the yield. 
Thus, the base rate of 2% of income was increased by the same percentage and resulted in a rate of 2.505% of income. So Barbara and Harold's tax liability is $2,060.99. With their assessed value of $325,600 and Fairfield CLA of 94.81%, Barbara and Harold's tax calculation based on property value was $5,075.80. Their annual tax bill was adjusted by $3,014.81 to reflect their income-based tax obligation of $2,060.99. When looking at how these formulas get applied in your district, remember that roughly 65% of homestead property owners pay state education taxes based on their household incomes rather than their property value. You might want to check out whether your own household qualifies. Finally, let's look at the impact on second homeowners and businesses who are taxed at the non-residential rate. Barbara and Harold's friends, Sally and Tim, moved south when they retired, but they bought a camp right on St. Albans Bay so they would still have their connection to Vermont, their family, and their old friends. Their four-acre camp is right on the lake. This property is assessed at $432,800. Their tax rate, however, isn't dependent on the school district budget or spending for students. The legislature sets a uniform tax rate for all non-residential properties each year. For fiscal year 2018, the adjusted rate was $1.53.5 per $100 of assessed value. The only adjustment for Sally and Tim reflected the town CLA, which in the case of St. Albans Bay was 103.86%. So their effective tax rate was $1.47.8 making their education tax liability $6,396.78. If you still have questions about Vermont's education funding formula, you can review the FAQs and education tax calculation tables on the Vermont Department of Taxes website, tax.vermont.gov, or get in touch with Susan Holst, Director of Board Education Services at the VSBA. There's no question this is a complicated way to do things, and we've only scratched the surface here. But there are three key elements within this system. The first is that the state is obligated to fund all education spending approved by voters. So while the tax bills are distributed by the towns, all tax revenue is sent to the state's education fund. School districts receive their money from the education fund. Second, in response to concerns about rising property tax rates, the state has added cost containment features into the formula over time, such as an excess spending threshold. These features add even more complexity to the system, affecting communities that are losing students and seeing an increase in their spending per pupil. Finally, it's important to remember that although the mathematical manipulations, like equalized pupils and common levels of appraisal may seem convoluted and theoretical, they are designed to ensure that every public school student in Vermont has access to equal education resources, a promise enshrined in Vermont's constitution. I want to acknowledge the credits because we have some seniors at Spalding High School and Mary and you that were our narrators there. So acknowledge the credits. Thought the students help us out. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you to our new video discussing the top 10 tools for. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's great. Thank you. All right. So now that we have an overview of Vermont's education funding system, let's apply it to Washington Central. It's always been a challenge, okay? Um, this. This slide illustrates the comparison between the prior year budget to the current year budget, so using FY23. The expenditures are the amount the district plans to spend. The revenues are the amount the district anticipates receiving through offset expenditures. And the net education spending is the amount that needs to be raised by state and local education property taxes, augmented by other, other ed fund revenues. So you'll see FY23, 36 million, FY23 revenues, 7 million, and net ed spending, FY23, 28 million. Next, we review the change in equalized pupils and the overall impact it has on local education spending per equalized pupil. Now, we know that the equalized pupil 
remember from the video, <laughs> number is a two-year average of the district's average daily enrollment, ADM, adjusted by several factors for pre-K, secondary students, students in poverty, and limited English profic proficiency. The formula to determine equalized pupils is on track to change in FY2425, though, the weighting is. Mm -hmm. The FY2223 equalized pupils decreased from 1,431.5 to 1,412.82, or 1.3%. 1 this combined with the increase in net education spending results in, the inc in an increase of $985 in local education spending per equalized pupil. The local education spending per equalized pupil is what actually determines the equalized tax rate. Here we see the year over year change in the common level of appraisal for each town in the district. It's important to remember that the CLA is a comparison of each town's total property value on the grand list versus the fair market value of properties. The higher the fair market value of properties in a town, the further under 100% the CLA will be. As the CLA decreases, the tax rate increases. This is how the state provides taxpayers with an equalized grand list across the state. Last year, a CLA drop of 0.6% was equal to approximately one cent on the tax rate. The district saw decreases ranging from between 4.21% and 13.86% with the most significant drops in Worcester and Berlin. Do we anticipate that will be even more this year? Given that much thousand I have not anticipated that. <laughs> 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 oh, here we see the comparison of the individual town tax rates from FY22 to FY23 after the change in the CLA. Factors used to develop the tax rate projections uh, equalized pupils equal 1,412.82, property yield equals 13,314, equalized tax rate equals 1.5322. 13,314 dollars was the final property yield set during last year's legislative se session. It's important to know that this number is not officially set by legislature until after town meeting. The property yield estimate used to develop the FY23 budget was actually $12,937, which means the final tax rates are actually slightly lower than we had anticipated. In December, the tax commissioner will provide us with a forecasted property yield to, to use in estimates for the FY24 budget. <clears throat> Each town started with an equalized tax rate of 1.5322 and an equalized tax rate decrease of about 18 cents. As we saw earlier in the video, the local common level of appraisal affects the actual tax rate which is why the amounts differ by town. As we begin the, the development of the FY23-24 budget, the leadership team has already identified current realities that will impact the budget, including declining enrollment, staffing shortages, and changes to the way that Vermont funds special education needs, and changes to the weighting of pupils for the equalized pupil calculation. Based upon board recommendation made last year, the plan is to discontinue the use of fund balance as a revenue to support the equity scholar in residence and the new teacher added at East Montpelier Elementary. We are also looking ahead to FY24-25 and the impact of the sunset of ESSER funding that has supported additional staffing for nursing, school counselors, and interventionists throughout the pandemic. Throughout the budget development process, we will remember our why. Keeping academic achievement and student outcomes, student health and safety, and humanity, justice, and equity central to our work. The leadership team will consider student needs, equitable, equitable distribution of resources, and education quality, and evidence-based practices 
to make decisions for the development of budget draft number two. We will also factor in workforce challenges, rising costs, declining enrollment, and limitations to instructional time. Not much to consider there. <laughs> um, we hope this training has given board members and the community the tools necessary to begin the budget development process and put together the pieces of a very complex puzzle. We will stop the video here to answer questions. Please let us know what questions this raises for you and what stands out the most from this training. I think it does. I Can you remind us of what the excess spending threshold is or was and where we are? It was 19,000 something, like 19,991. Do not quote me on that one. Okay. I'll look it up for you. But it was around 19,000. And what was our spending last year? Uh, 20,400. We are allowed certain exclusions to take off of that before it's compared to the statewide uh, excess spending threshold. And we do um, have several of those items, which include our capital expenditure. We didn't pay a penalty, but we, uh, it, was, it was eliminated for the past two years, but we would not have paid a penalty because we would have had those decreases removed from the excess spending threshold. But historically, we've been close to that. Are we anticipating that it because that it will be back in play again this year? I would always anticipate that, given um, the closeness in previous years and given all of the reality in the winter there. Can you remind us the dates that we learn a lot of those aspects, like the excess spending next? Generally, December um, is when I get all of that information. The one thing that we won't get until January is uh, actual CLAs. <clears throat> and because the meeting that you will have in December is December 21st, I hope to have all of that for that meeting. If, if the state is on time delivering it, they're supposed to have Property yields to us by December 1st, which that comes from the tax commissioner, and he's usually very on time. Um, he or she, I don't know if he or she lives here, but um, this is a, a question about the, the dates. So we are, it will not be part of our December 1st Wednesday meeting, it will be the third Wednesday that the community forum portion. So are we rolling it all together, or is there still a community forum? Mm -hmm. There is still like that, actually. We have a community mm -hmm. forum, uh, or or what it essentially means is there's two community mm -hmm. forums in December. Yeah. 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 And, and it would basically, what I remember from the one basically is when we get information back so that we could have more information. Mm -hmm. Be sure we can get but yeah. we can switch. Well, I would say in some ways, because at that point, it's the presentation that has already incorporated the feedback from the forum. Mm -hmm. It's probably a board meeting that's going to look a little bit more like a traditional board meeting with a hefty presentation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that feels different than a forum, but it is slightly different. Right. And so what it, what it makes me wonder about is kind of what you were saying for should we be flipping some of the business that would typically have been at the third Wednesday to the first Wednesday so that we can have a, a long focus on that forum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think what, what we're quite there in the habit of doing that we're starting today is like we, we have the planners that's around in the end of our meeting and then we look at our future ahead of it. And if that's what it's looking like, then we would definitely give that signal to the steering committee and we would I like that. But yes. I, I will say to advise on that that much of the business that happens at that meeting is both like budget related. Right. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I think there were some capital things that because you get a capital improvement plan last spring, we're ahead of the curve and probably won't have it that I just remember a being presentations to the hub. And so 
is that what this part is? I'm just trying to clarify and be sure I understand what these dates mean. And, and I'm thinking, as you're saying it, this is really when we vote yes. Oh, no, we do that in January, right? No, man. Yeah. But it, is this what in the last year or two years was a presentation to, to everyone as well? Because that was really what the business was. I don't remember us doing other business. Yeah, so yes, we, we were doing them on online, those, uh, those mm -hmm. presentations that we have. We approved that by Jen at our last meeting. We approved that, that calendar. Mm -hmm. of, uh, it was mm -hmm. part of our finance. I don't, we don't, mm -hmm. uh, we'll do it at the end of the meeting and we'll see how all of the dates align. But yes, I think it includes uh, that particular meeting is mostly going to be heavy on budget. But mm -hmm. by December, we have had to do all that work. From right, mm -hmm. so November, November is when we're going to be doing more of a heavy sharing of the community and getting input from the community. And the board will be giving the budget parameters at the November meeting because we wanted to hear from the leadership team, you know, from the district. For like this is informational for us to be able to put some parameters out to give them more. We heard all of them. That we have to consider. And then the other, just to clarify, for, for uh, our new agenda, it, last year we, we did include the, the charging call. We didn't put it as one of our parameters, but we kept it in mind that what if it mm -hmm. uh, has a. Mm -hmm. If we're going to call the first number one community forum, can we call this one a budget presentation or something? I think in some ways. Once we know what we want to accomplish with it, we just need to describe what that is when we market it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we've described that in a budget flyer that's yeah, going to go a out of the budget budget budget. Budget. Okay. I should make sure that's going to go out that we haven't put out before that explains what each meeting is. Okay. So whether we call it a forum or a board meeting, mm -hmm. they'll know what, what's mm -hmm. happening at the meeting, which I think is the crux of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Lindy, the only thing I think is that we were distinguishing this as a forum because it there won't be just one small page of public comment. Right. I think last mm -hmm. year we had more of an interaction with the public. I think we even well we did break breakout groups in November and then in December it was more of a discussion mm -hmm. and feedback received from the community. So I think that's why we were calling it a forum. I'm just it doesn't mean you can't change it. Budget forum or budget. Discussion or yeah, I mean we can yeah we can play with that when we look at the plan about how we name it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in the flyer we were saying the board will hold a second community forum to extend the second draft budget, which includes any proposals the board is considering with regards to the program changes. Community members are going to attend and share. So and I will share that mm -hmm. with, with the board. It's just literally just mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. it seems like that November budget. For that forum is the is the uh, really best opportunity to influence the funding, and sort of ours too in a way because um, that that's where we'll figure out work and shape it yeah. in terms of values. Yeah, I agree. And then um, in December, those that in, uh, that participate will react to what has been created because of that format yeah. or uh, that forum for a check and balance. Yeah, and have we stayed yeah. true to what we were? Yeah. And I do think people are um, anticipating a much different CLA because the houses have been going for so much mm -hmm. yeah. 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 everything. Okay. We are like, I had a kind of I, 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 I want to make a comment just so yeah. if you're new to it, to sort of have uh, we think about the role of the board if you're wondering. Yeah. We're pretty fortunate to have a capable staff and they do most of the work. But so uh, we get to guide the budgeting process. And so that as I then explained to setting parameters, uh, establishing priorities, and asking good questions, I think is another piece of that. Um, but then beyond that, we each have to understand the budget. Not you don't have to understand all those formulas. I think they lose people. I like the video, but but it, it, it's too much. But you have to understand the basic concepts and how they fit together. And it can take some time, but but we'll have plenty of that. And then um, eventually we'll adopt it, right? In January, hopefully we'll we'll adopt it, and then it becomes ours to explain to the community and to uh, recommend. And, and we've been fortunate. I think all of our budgets. Are there was one year the U32 budget got close, but 
we've we've there had a good one. I think I want to make more of Yeah, so but just to say we could have to go into campaign mode at a certain point in the year because we, we don't want to pay, that's for sure. And then um and then it, uh, and then part of that whole process is inviting the community to participate. So that's why we've created a murky plan to get people to come. Yeah. Okay. And then that November is to be mind of that November second any other yes Danny. i'm just curious if there's thoughts on how this calendar tracks with contract negotiations and and that process i think the the yeah, major factor yeah i think yeah. you kind of talk about that's really a budget assumption from the budgeting standpoint mm -hmm. what you're talking about is an assumption um and um Usually planned for. It's usually planned for. It's our best guess. It's so, been correct. <laughs> and then it's contract is signed when the contract is correct. Signed. And we have to, and the board understands as part of that process that where that where, where that process lands um, is either going to closely align with the assumption or not. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of part of the process. Mm -hmm. Which is why we started the conversation a couple of meetings yes. ago, mm -hmm. just kind of having that understanding. Yes. I have a question about the flyer. Yeah. And him going out, what is the mode of so in? this is the first time we've done this. this. It's a very simple pre-budget. It doesn't what it has is actually a repeat kind of of one of the slides that has all the dates and the explanation of it. The intention right now is it will go out with my community letter this week so that it's two weeks in advance of November 2nd, hopefully getting folks there. Um, and I'll probably describe it a little bit in the letter. Um, that's the initial intention. It is, um, it's printable. We could put it in students' backpacks if the board thought that is another thought that, um, that we've tossed out. Um, not sure to what extent we mm -hmm. want to stuff those on the backpacks and whether or not the board thinks that that's effective. But, um, we also talked about putting a stack in each of the town offices. Mm -hmm. Um, and if the board has other ideas about where we should. So we were gonna grab a point or you know, yeah. we were gonna grab information that we used at our last year part where we did the mapping yes. and try to sort of figure out what are the best places, mm -hmm. but it's in a way that it could be printable in mm -hmm. you know, black and white in the font or in color. So, and then post it on the website. Post it. Like, I don't. I just don't think the stack a post like up on the bulletin board in the town clerk and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's some people that some of the feedback we got is that other people don't do. What about a QR code on it? Some people could scan yeah, the QR code and write it on yeah. it. Yeah. And a lot of us don't have printers at home, so it needs to be compatible with cell phone. So folks should know it, it's still in PDF form at this point because okay. we have not That's shifted to um, the, the newest letter format that I will start to use for the community letter will be one that's mobile friendly. Mm -hmm. um, some things are still going to be PDFs. This mm -hmm. is one of them. Um, so, you know, there's going to be an imperfect nature to everything. Mm -hmm. It's the first time we've done this type of thing. Definitely room to reflect on it. But yeah, but your suggestion, and this came up at the um, mapping, what we also can do is in the newsletter, which is mobile friendly, pull out the key nuggets of mm -hmm. the flyer. So they are not getting the flyer, but they're getting essential information about it. And that what we heard overwhelmingly was we like to get our news from our direct school. Yeah, well, that 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 is the yeah. highest from the highest family. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. but yeah. in terms of general community, that's not how they're getting well. Correct. Do we tend to have a mechanism for students to be able to give feedback about what they would like to see the budget focus on? That's a good question. Well, our student, can we take our students? Oh, about the flyers, cell phones, and backpacks. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there is that input. <laughs> I think the survey. Send out to the students would actually really be beneficial yeah. just to see what their input is. Um, I think I feel like people would have to fill that out. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if the budget, the purpose of the budget is to fund our school systems to benefit our students. 
so their voices should be a part of this process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a little worried about access to the process if we just have like a single November community forum and then a December, like a single day moment to look at draft one, a single day moment to look at draft two. Is there any way, especially if you can have the second days, December 21st? Um, <laughs> is there any way that the, there can be a window of time and maybe we can collectively sort of promote the opportunity for public comment? Maybe there's a book couple with a list of budget highlights that we could share for them. Um, and publicly as possible and give people sort of a, a small window other than just a form day. So the rain. A couple things. One is that the questions that will be used at the forum that are meant to be discussion table questions will also, similar to the other forums, will go out in survey format. And we have been getting a fairly reasonable response to that. So there is the opportunity for those who can't be there. That's just one part of what you're saying. The other part of what you're saying almost, um, and I'm not sure actually what this board typically does in terms of um, a rotation of board members writing a blurb for the local newspaper. Those blurbs could include like, here's what we talked about at the last meeting. Um, and then board members can put that out on front porch forum. So there are mechanisms I think to be able to kind of do what you're talking about at some level. Um, I'm not sure what, I'm not yeah, actually sure we what were, done in the past. Yeah, we were hoping it should carry the email thing the day. We were hoping to revise mm -hmm. the, you know, putting a blurb from the board in front of which forum using the survey. So so that any, any ideas are welcome. The tricky part is last year we had more forums, but we ended up having forums too close together and not enough input yes. from the people. And it, it, is, it was, a bit of a waste of time and we it was a poor decision to reduce the, the those meetings to make it more make it more meaningful. We got a lot of people from people that you know they don't want to come, they're gonna show up and they have something to say they do one and people are being filling out the survey and mm -hmm. I have been really well received. So mm -hmm. we did survey students and community to see what you know to help with that and, and we'll keep improving the, the tricky thing is that time crunch. That, that we have this as yeah. the board, we want to be able to make sure that we all are behind. But and and you can do outreach to you know to your unit to if you're hearing and then bring that voice to mm -hmm. when board. when are conferences? I mean, I, I just wonder if that's an avenue of a way of having either a display mm -hmm. or having you know a rotation of board members present for questions or you know, so a lot of yeah, that's a good yeah. Well, that also makes me think actually the QR code, which is helpful to link to the fly for the budget flyer. Actually, the QR code in that instance should link to the survey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the poster could be yeah. here are the dates, here's a link to a survey if you want to get input. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good opportunity for students to show their parents who don't know how to access it. Well, some of us have their phones that don't use. I don't know their, you know, my mm -hmm. kids have tried all that. My millennial and my Gen Z couldn't use. One other suggestion. Um, what if uh, the board, board members, and I'm building on Daniel's idea of getting more information out in between sessions, what if we did one minute videos? <laughs> where we have to very succinctly explain where we are, what's going on, and how you can And we could do those as a way to market the forums. And also, one other idea, maybe a um, like board uh, at email address where people could submit comments and questions. Mm -hmm. and then, have a board email address. Yeah, I thought we did like mm -hmm. before I joined the board. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. no, we yeah. have one for the other yeah. thing, but yeah, yeah. Not, when we were doing the unified history, we had one, mm -hmm. but yeah, we haven't used one. Mm -hmm. 
I, I just think, Kari, your point, your point previously was a good one and also sort of an ironic one. The, the idea of November being the point at which people can most effectively influence the process is, of course, not the time when most people will, mm -hmm. you know, react and if they yeah. feel really particularly strongly, it's going to happen sort of in reaction to the, you know, budget as it, as it approaches approval. And mm -hmm. So I guess just coming back to this, like, maybe it's after the 21st when the, when the second draft becomes published or the window of time. Is there an opportunity for us to sort of, or for, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I guess I think I'm, I'm concerned that there's not an opportunity after that day or except for that day for people to react to the second draft before the third draft so that the next one starts being developed. And so I guess I guess the question would also be, so I, I think we want to do it all at once. Front on the on the second draft, we're not asking people to give them a dollar and not right, or we're not. At, we we're looking for what what is the community value? What are like how do we align all of the, the student need the values, our mission, right? So we're not you know. So there's two ways to think about that. So when we are when we're going out to the community with that second draft, you know, we want their input and, and their ideas within those beliefs and supporting all learners and all students. We're not necessarily looking at them to tell us, like, you know, we don't agree that you're moving mm -hmm. this to here or that you're cut, you're doing more intervention, you know, like, so, so it's, uh, so that's what we're trying to get at. Right? So, and part of the reality is because the, the timeline um, at which the budget has to be ready for warning is very tight yeah. and it's right after, and there's a long break in between. So, I think your point's well taken, and that's one of the inherent challenges. We sort of have to work backwards from um, what's what's feasible with the yeah. Okay. Just making it hard. This is like when you get ready for the ballot, but Sam will tell me. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> any other question that we're at? I was going to explain like some of the things we did last year, like at that no, at that December one where we were on draft two and two A for the last year. Mm -hmm. The um, leadership team did a really great job of reminding everybody what their input has been. Like, what what had we heard in November? I, was yeah, it November last year. That we, so they we had taken all of that community input, and then we go, "This is what we heard from you. This is what we've given you with this, right? We had the level spending, and now this is with increases, and this is the effect. The bottom line: Susan does a really good job mm -hmm. with." All of it, right? Like, here's two, two A. These are the differences. This is what they achieve. This is what we can and can't do, right? Like we've talked a lot about um, instructional time limits and just people time limits as a commodity as well. And so, there's a lot of that. I think that that goes into the process of the future from here. What what we added in the summer cost. To that point, people value the transparency, which is, I think, the transparency of the budget. You know, like it's all there. It's like Maggie, and then I don't want to spend yeah. because we're going to touch into this in the finance. Yes. Yeah. So Suzanne also spoke to some of the points that we heard overwhelmingly from the community in your presentation and how the efforts were made to incorporate those things into this next budget. And I'm hearing at least one of them that doesn't sound like it was emphasized, and I can anticipate that that's going to be a, something that's going to come up as a, a community concern, and that's the farm to table. Um, so that's, you know, that, for me, I'm anticipating that's something that's going to come up, but it seems like all, all of the other, like, top areas of um, interest from community engagement have, are being incorporated into the team budget. No, specifically there, you know, what we've heard was we want more integration of outdoor learning, specifically around agriculture, incorporating local farms, bringing this into the, into our cafeterias, et cetera, you know, big nature stuff, and then the small stuff, like why don't we have a community garden at such and such school? Well, we'd like to do it at this school. How do we deal with, you know, one school having something and one not having it? And whose responsibility is that? 
all that and all that stuff. But that was a that is something we have heard that we can buy on the board consistently from the public is this is something that's important to us. And you spoke to that in like one of those four things, mm -hmm. and just isn't something that made it on the list. But I'm sure we'll hear about it in November, December because it isn't. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for saying mm -hmm. really helpful. And thank you for training. <laughs> We're gonna move on into the next report. <laughs> All right, so to start off, we just have an update that kind of connects to last year. Um, we did talk a lot about the conversation last year because I thought that you could have started to talk about um, sexual harassment and assault. And we are working with Mosaic, and we got two new students this year who stepped forward who are keeping it going. Um, so you'll probably hear more about that as it goes on. I know there was a presentation last year, um, and they will be continuing that this year. Um, another thing, last week was the PFA to PACP, as well as the senior day. Um, the seniors are getting all their college stuff done. So it's a bit of a stressful time for everyone, but it was quite a helpful day last week. And I know ACPs and SACs are not the most favorites as well as a test <laughs> um, But they made it first, and it's over. <laughs> that was definitely a helpful thing last week. Yeah, so sports are finishing up for sports. So this this weekend, especially is senior weekend, kind of. So we have the varsity boys soccer Friday night. We have girls varsity soccer at one Saturday, and then we have the football team. Person at night that night, so definitely some sad times coming up, but I think it will be a good weekend. So make sure to come support. <laughs> um, the women can do field trip happened last week. I attended, and it was very inspiring to see all the young girls from around the schools that showed up, and I'm sure a lot of them were inspired by the women in the field and everything. And then we had a half day last week <laughs> because of lack of staff. So that was definitely a shock walking into school hearing that, but it happened and we came back fine and we, our scheduling actually really helped with that. And so we didn't miss the classes we missed that day. And then there's a concert tomorrow. <laughs> That's all I know. Middle <laughs> <laughs> school is at 5.30 and high school is at 7. <laughs> or it's fan concert. Um, if anyone wants to go see and support. Uh, as well, it is theater season coming up. We have the first middle school show in a while. And <laughs> we have the high school show as well, which is like a Shakespeare related. Thing. I'm stage managing both of them currently, uh, <laughs> and they're coming up early November and early December. And to that. And to end it, I'm sure some of you have heard about what's happening at Randolph recently. There's been a lot of transphobia nationally directed at Randolph. Um, I'm sure you can find a news story somewhere about it, but. Uh, student groups here are working with students at Randolph and connecting, and we have plans in the works for um, shows of support, possibly protests against all the hate that's directed at Randolph right now. Um, so we'll probably be hearing more about that as well. Just wanted to keep you updated. And that's all that we have. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So sophomores have pre-ACT, right? Did you all have the opportunity to do that when you were sophomores? Yeah. I wasn't here, so I didn't. Okay. Question on relay. Well, thank you for the presentation. Mm -hmm. So, it's been the COVID break for like you guys are doing. It's been a supporting day around the school. It's been important. Do you guys get 
Oh, the board email. We didn't know it was at six or at five thirty. We came at six because we got this. I just want to make sure that we were getting. Well, you should be part of the group, so I just want to make sure that I was going to know that I just want to make sure that we're getting so anything that would support our students. Yes, okay, good. Any size, any season, so if anything, I'm sorry, you always like for us. So now, thank you again. Now, there's a million. Yeah, sure, there's been a work, sure. Um, so we're trying out a new format, um, a revised format, it's not, not that new, um, to kind of broaden the scope of the information that the board receives from not just the superintendent, but also the central office leader for the team, which is what COLT stands for. Mm -hmm. And my apologies, I'm usually pretty good at spelling things out and I forgot. Um, it, it gave us a puzzle. Yes, it, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> and it's not in there anywhere. So, uh, just to say, this was good feedback. Um, but the goal is, you know, there's lots of parts of our office more than just what I sort of referred to eight for you. So we will try, to the extent that it's relevant, to organize it around the common work, and that is the academic and student outcomes, student health and safety, and justice. Sometimes that will work. Sometimes there won't. Sometimes there's just information for you to have. Um, obviously, we always welcome feedback. Um, sometimes we'll pick something out to highlight. Sometimes it won't. Um, obviously, there will always be room for questions. Um, so the one thing I would pick out from today, uh, just because it's the first of them, the well, second really, the, the first virtual version of them just happened. But Jen, I didn't know if we wanted to highlight the equity book groups. Yeah, so we had the second meeting of our equity book groups. The first one was on October 7th, as we wrote during our in-service. We were really happy to do the first one in person. A lot of people, we have mixed groups across all of our schools. And so people were meeting each other, some for the first time, some connecting after not seeing each other in person. We had about 90 minutes for that first session. Today was 60 minutes and it was via Google Meet. And um, I have gotten feedback from about half of the facilitators so far. And um, by and large, good, the hour flew by. Um, we were trying to do rounds of text connections to, to really explicitly connect the various books that we're reading. And um, either they were rushed or folks only got through one round. So we'll take that feedback and figure it out. And um, one thing I'd say that we hadn't, I'm part of the planning group. One thing we hadn't anticipated that we'll have to figure out too is that we have folks in different book groups and they're in shared spaces. And so mm -hmm. that caused a little bit of complexity today that we haven't completely thought about ahead of time. We'll figure that out, but by and large, good feedback, I think a desire to continue in person, um, that logistically is pretty tricky on Wednesday afternoons, but we will have time embedded in our January in service together. So um, overall going well, we'll have, we will have met um, six times over the course of the year. Thanks. Can you share the um, the meeting list with us? I am Here happy to share the meeting list with you all. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it and we'll get it out to you. It yeah, is in one of the community letters, but they're a little hard to search, which I acknowledge. I have a new format, so it will probably be easier. I can forward it. I have a picture of books. Yeah, yeah, that's yes. yes. that, yes. that, yes. yeah. I'll do both. Have a photo and take a photo. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. For, for the ones that couldn't hear me before at the beginning of the meeting, I just thank them for, for that. Can you hear me now, Jonathan? Maybe. I yeah. Know Jack, but... Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Just appreciate how you guys divided it and you know, emphasized each priority. Yeah. Really yeah, I like the book. Yeah. It was a very high mm -hmm. performance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I can, yeah, yeah, similar in the realm of highlighting, um, I can take questions back to the group meeting, but also want, you know, the board's talked a lot about wanting a little bit more of a picture of what's happening in all the schools. Um, so the leadership team 
um, sort of built this template and also each month we'll take a look at what template or what things within the template will highlight. So this will be the basic format, similar to the central office report, it's organized around the common work, um, but it'll ebb and flow as to how much is written in each one. Um, the goal is to give you a little bit of a snapshot and some celebrations. Um, some of you get this from newsletters, but not everything in here is in newsletter. So um, yeah. It's very helpful. Sorry, mm -hmm. it's easy to read, and I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I like that it's all over the page. The old stuff and everything is broken up. Mm -hmm. and, and it was really nice to hear everybody's voice. You know, every principal's voice you can hear in. And, mm -hmm. and it, that was really good. And also, you can talk about you know we're paying for equity scholars who the with the answer funds and to have it just shown in every principle, you know, like what are they doing that that work is actually coming together. Yeah. Any other people have any questions to that or mm -hmm. how the report the central of the month or center report was on page 15. Yeah, there were some links there. I don't know if you guys had a chance to even get the link. Is there any questions that like to have a little more to share? But Hope you read there that you're also having a uh, full day model or full year model. Well, Stephen, it's, it's here. It's a full day model. <laughs> is that if the career center is still on the works, if it's not, it's not final, but it's it, basically the students would be wouldn't be losing that time coming back and forth between between the schools when they come here. Martin school have missed half an hour in the bus or but it's, even it's a great model. It's like, <laughs> yeah. We're having a lot of conversations back and forth. It doesn't change the formula, which is what had a lot of people really concerned, yeah. right? So the school which is something that the state needs to work on still, because we're still competing for funding, mm -hmm. and whether we want it or not. People have that idea that the, that this high school would get less money. It's still the same formula. We've been talking about the full day model for several years with them because it is a way for them to be able to educate the kids without that travel time, but also it allows them to use their facility in new ways because they don't have to cram everything into the same time period for them to be in the shops and any of that work as well. So it can give them a lot of flexibility to maybe add some additional kids over there as well. So it's it's a great it's a great idea. It's just Longer it, it's long overdue. I agree. It's long overdue. We're trying to work out, you know, every sending school is responsible for the special education supports, right? So we're working, you know, we have two schools that work great right now. We're working with, the, you know, that send their services there. So it's, it's a work in progress. But that is super, it's exciting because it best serves our, our students, which is what we, we want to do. The other thing that I would like to share that I didn't have something to share is that our the medical profession instructor, Jimmy Jocelyn at the career center. I can't say enough good things about her. And that she, I, I want her to come present to you guys. But she's just so I can back. One of the things that they're doing right now is that the Central Vermont Medical Center has requested the students to be certified or just to be higher in the field. Because as you know, the workforce is so she's got, she's working with 10 students and they were gonna, they're going to be a, joining lot for like patients it starts at the school but that connection is just so important and she has had um uh, she shared in her program she's one of the instructors who's been able to really embed all of her understanding of, the, of justice and and all of, she has a uh, an increase in by students this year too so she's been able to like really incorporate her curriculum in the way that best serves the population of our state. Mm -hmm. so, that's all. Any other questions? And then thank you for picking up on that. <coughs> yeah. The link that goes to board operations and discussion mm -hmm. on page 16. Yeah. I'm not I just wanted to frame the conversation here with the help of Megan too, and Tom is here with us tonight too. We have some extra questions, it, but it, you received both these drafts, 
actually I had a chance to to read them. Yeah, so so mainly we, we just have with the first uh, with the first day uh, there's no boundary adjustment. So there's two things that we need to do tonight, right? Not two things, one thing. We either are okay with the deed without the boundary adjust, uh, adjustment, and we have already authorized the uh, need to sign that that deed, and that's what the board wants to do. That's one option there. The second option is with the uh, boundary change. So uh, basically the Berlin will be will be giving part of the land and you guys read read that to uh, that we for the town it's still for the town center but it won't be owned by the town of Berlin anymore but it's still with the same purpose so uh, it's you know we felt that and we the advice of our and we felt we couldn't you know just sign without bringing it back to the board and we wanted to get the sense of the board and it's basically the road that you know, with what is causing you know, this so you know, thoughts or questions i just wish that the lawyer had been explicit about if we went the way of okay the boundary was uh adopted version yeah that the remaining remaining piece we would still retain that uh right to reclaim that property if it's use change or if we try to sell the remaining piece in the reserve I, well I so it's, uh, yeah. it's still there correct because yeah. it's the same amount of acreage that is being transferred that was originally um agreed upon and and essentially there's a slice of it well you can see it in the drawing there's a slice that it needs to be um given the town that needs to give to the developer to in order to make the road in shape in a compatible way with the town center um i guess i don't understand the color code yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i think the pink piece is yeah. currently part of what we own and the green piece is what we would get if we didn't the pink piece up. Right. But as if you see the pink piece, the road goes around. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up side of Do we get it or does the town of Berlin? The town of Berlin yeah. gets right. it to keep it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, we would retain. Because currently the green one is owned by the mall. The rest. Mm -hmm. And so then we'd like to walk from yeah. the mm -hmm. We're stopping traffic. Basically. But the language includes the ability to just adjust orders. Is it still that there would never be a net change to that three point eight that's given? Um, there is there is a line that says that they new adjustments or changes. Like any change. To the boundary adjustment, yes. Just to the boundary of it. To the total acreage no. Yeah. So it'll always be an exchange. It'll always be that three point eight would be maintained, right? Like they get 0.5, they're point five, they're getting point five back. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's what we wrote it. Okay, you can't change that. Um, yeah. you have I just to clarify when you the green mm -hmm. that you're, we're talking about here, the green is currently school property, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh oh, yeah. then what the town of Berlin is proposing is that the green. Uh, we would do a boundary line adjustment and square off this lot right here mm -hmm. for development and in turn receive from the folks who are getting the green the paint so the paint is actually berlin mall property Correct. today yeah. but that green triangle is while well, it's ours now it's part of that 3.8 that's, yes. that's correct yeah that's correct yeah that's correct Yes. And 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 part of the motivation here is, yeah, when we are, the town are, are basically economic developers, and um, we actively seek folks to come into our new town the center. We don't know any. We do the town of Berlin does not own anything yet, right? And so there's we're dealing with private property. We were successful to bring a. Uh, uh, 98 unit senior housing project into, into there. That, that really was the town of Berlin brought that across the street. Uh, it's going to permit uh, for 30 units of, of workforce housing. And, and the town of Berlin has brought that to the table on, on uh, private land, right? And so uh, for us to, to develop this lot without it squared off, and, and, and say we, we we had a developer 
And it's very difficult to find developers today with COVID and cost and materials um, that we say we have somebody interested, but we said, okay, we have to then go back to your board again and, and square it off at that time. And that process is just, it can kill a project. Mm -hmm. So um, again, we, we understand the concerns. We, it, it'll be uh, the, uh, the same amount of acreage or more that the town would retain from any boundary line adjustment. Where is the senior housing in relation to the green and red? Uh, so, so this road here, it's allowed right here. <laughs> okay. Where is that green triangle in relation to the walking trail and hiking trail that are used by the Berlin School? This doesn't impact that at all. Okay. It's right on the opposite side. Yeah. What I'm hearing from you is correct because the, yeah. the school's yeah. over here. Is my understanding right? The school is over here. No, but he said the senior housing is here. So here's the sign. I apologize. Yeah, seeing the one. Yeah, I think you got that. So, so the scene. This is the senior proud housing project right here. Yeah. And this little triangle we're talking is about right here. The school's over here. The your trail network is in and around. Yes, right there. And I should say too, Aaron and Chris were part of these conversations too. Mm -hmm. Don't see any from there, from their perspective, in terms of you know, the land or things that the school might need or the district might need. Sounds like one of those. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's kind of further. Yeah. The um and then so the red words, the the uh, D with the red yeah. is the proposed change. Yes, yes. correct. Yes. Does it still provide us the ability that if the developer isn't going, you know, I mean, it does it still protect us that that property doesn't go away? Yeah, so what's in, in the last line? Yeah. So, yeah. So the right, those lines right below the red right. section. Yeah. The right of reentry, what they call it. Yeah. It's still going to be Yeah. yeah. But I just wish the lawyer could say, I could have mentioned that. I think being included in the yeah. adjusted yeah. version, but it's really. Yeah. And, that, and again, this is a, it's a, it's a draft. I, I'm not hearing from the board that you know that they're opposed to that. So if there's an edit that's needed. Is it Jonas has his hand up? Yeah, I mean, would it be possible to write the deed so that that I mean, that's some very general language. Would it be possible to write in this specific case to the deed if the board feels that that would be appropriate instead of leaving this open for further action down the line? Jonas, do you have a suggested language? Because the way I read it is that that line, which was in the original and in the second, does say that. Because it says if the grantee ceases to use the property or if they ever enter into blah, blah, blah. Right? If the property has adjusted, something like that. Has adjusted. Right, but this is but not only for this adjustment, they can make any future adjustments. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's not the adjustment itself. I think it's the transfer of land that we own to a private for-profit entity rather than to the municipality of the town of Berlin. I, I think that's the concern. Right, and are they also citing this? Yes. When you say Sorry. that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me a little generic, no, not the town. The, um, Remember that private. The private, uh, the basically the no, 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 we we're signing it just with the town. The town is, you know, getting that adjusted. that adjusted property back, which is going to have the road. So there's no question that it will be um, used by the town, right? Correct. So, so what, what the, you may be familiar if you've done a survey of your property and, and filed it with the with the town clerk. Right now, there's a survey of this property that we filed with the town clerk. A boundary line adjustment is um, uh, it's, it's it's a 
it's a, when properties share a, a boundary, you don't have to do a subdivision because you're not creating a new lot. You can adjust that boundary. It has to be recorded again uh, with a survey, professional survey at the town clerk's office. So the so it's it, it would be then a, a conveyance from the town of Berlin and a conveyance from the from the Berlin Mall for people or greater parts coming back to the town of Berlin. So in as I see your hand up, Jonathan, and as in, the town is going to be served at 3.8 acres, whatever, whatever they're adjusting that probably they have now served at 3.8 acreage, yeah. which is what we agree. It, 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 well, otherwise, it's just showing the yeah, it's just showing the adjustment. And as if they can't certainly sell our land, we just to make it to them for profit or just for development. Jonathan? Yeah, I just was, um, I think there needs to be an addition to this red language, uh, boundary adjustments and exchanges with adjacent lots, which are necessary to create the need to uh, permissible provided that such adjustments and exchanges do not result in a net loss of acreage to the town or to the district. Well, it, it, would be, it would be town. It's not ours. Yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, it's, well, but the, the, I mean, we granted we granted property to the town, so uh, there would be a potential impact to uh, otherwise school property, district property. What about if you read the line after that? If the guarantee ceases to, would that help? That's the grantee or the town or the no, it doesn't. No, I think I think there needs to be additional language that says what I just clearly stated, which is uh, the, the town doesn't want to lose any property, and I would do right, right? But I think this is all connected to that three point eight five acres, yeah. mm -hmm. and so. This is specific to that, that it, there's a protection that the private, the, the exchange that's occurring means it's still going to stay at 3.85 and that the mall can't somehow encroach on that 3.85. We're protected beyond that 3.85. They can't, we haven't granted that. To yeah, no, I appreciate that and I understand that. And that's why I think that it's important to say there's not a lot loss and not loss of acreage to the town or to the district. We're just stating again what's already uh, a plain in the language, apparently. Yeah, Jonathan, That's there's all. no there's no this represents no change to the plot of land that the that the district is planning to convey to the town. That doesn't change at all. What changes here is that the town is swapping that those two triangles with the private developers. One of the concerns that the board had pre when we discussed this previously was that we didn't want that land that we were donating to our fellow municipality. We didn't want that land to later be turned over or, or sold to someone who was going to develop it even further. Right. Then we had given that to them for free. Right. This what the proposal here doesn't change our land. It doesn't change the plot that we're giving to them at all. This would happen after essentially after we we give them that land what they want is permission to swap land that we gave them oh, to the for-profit group for land that that the for-profit group like would own right that's what those two triangles are i'm uh, i'm comfortable with it in this specific occasion because it seems like a very small and limited you know issue and i think that's okay but i don't like that the language here gives the town and the for-profit developers the ability to swap more land, right? Which may impact the use of the land down down the road. This isn't going to impact our trails, but I think that this language presents risk that that may occur down the road. So okay. while I'm okay with this, I don't like this general language, and I would like that you know that the, the board is you know that the, the board is okay with with that quit claim, but not other ones in the future yeah well i would just add that i've never been in favor of the district uh, transferring any land and i live in berlin uh, to the town so 
Um, I think it just needs to be that that area that I that I mentioned. I think it just makes it clearer that uh, the town, or the the district, is not in any way going to be losing potentially additional property. That's all. So what I, what I can do is, if the, if the board is comfortable with it, is then I can go back and talk to Nick. Okay, I, I think what is, what is clear is just a, still more clearance on the, that. The, I, I see Tom was, you know, not even said that it's okay, it's okay, you want to put in the district there. I don't know that we can add district because we are on all the land. So as long as we're fully protected, it seems like the board is okay with the, I, I would want a formal motion, obviously, if, before we move on, but. What a motion. So, so I'll move that we accept the, the, the recommendation, the recommendation or the request to uh, provide a property property boundary adjustment. Appropriate boundary adjustment and its change. Right. Yeah, but with the restriction, I would like to propose that it's with the restriction that Jonas recommended, which is this specific one, not any and all future yeah. adjustments. And that we would run that language by yes. whatever so, legal language is required to make mm -hmm. that a requirement. Yeah. Like, so move by Carrie, do you have that? Is that, is that okay, adding that verbiage? Yeah. Because I think it's important that it, if we look at what the explanation memo is, it's the boundary adjustment language that's different and that's what's being proposed. And so we just need to be sure. And I, I have a number of parties here. It's what it's part of the the concept that does. And another instance of adjustment should trigger our right. So, so the, the way that we were seeing it is that, you know, uh, the deed with the boundary adjustment language will allow the town to keep a piece of this property to the neighboring land landowner only as part of the new town center in exchange for a piece of the property equal or greater in size. Although this lead, although this lead follows the underlying theme of the property, we consider that property will be used, it will, that property is, will still be used for the town center. My concern is the actual one, which is not the yeah, yeah. So, so we would make sure that it's a because that was the impact. The time is not. Yeah. So, okay. so all I have is that you move to accept the request to provide a property boundary adjustment specific to this particular yeah. And and I think yeah. we could be we mind doing it like this. Sorry. The, 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 the boundary adjustment. That we, ex we accept the the request to use the deed with the property adjustment language. To allow the town to allow the town to give a piece of the property. A piece, yeah. To the neighboring. Yeah. To the neighboring Do we need an awful awful right like, <laughs> Do we also need to authorize the board to sign? Well, you, you had already authorized the board chair to sign yeah. a document, but I was looking at it that I felt like I need to come back to you to yeah. this particular yeah. add that to it. I felt like I already had to. Yeah. It doesn't seem like we need that. Yeah. Okay, we did. Yeah. But for the other piece of at least of that work and that we request that the attorney you know, review this and make sure we're fully protected. Second. Oh, wait, I need to make sure I get this. This is my language, so I don't know what I'm saying. So now it says that you approve the request to use the deed with the property adjustment language to allow the town to give a piece of this property to a neighboring land. Only as much as the well, that we want a piece of the property to a neighborhood. Yeah. And request that this is reviewed by legal counsel. Okay. okay. I don't think the town giving property, I think we're swapping in time property. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's yeah, the difference. So where we say swapping, you got to say it. Yeah, we have it. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Kari, and the Dorsa. 
All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. Okay. 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 All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? May I abstain? Yeah, I'm staying upstairs. Thank you, gentlemen. Abstention. So the motion is carried. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Uh, we've got a lot going on right now. Welcome you all. Come out and visit us. We've got a great story to tell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay. Yeah. If we're being hard at work, guys, we're going to take five minutes and take the women to use the facility <laughs> then and come back at seven. There's still a few five over here. Maybe I want to go. Oh, God, John. Yeah. 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 And there's a
So the next item in our agenda is the BSPA resolutions. I was thinking that we would go one by one quickly. I know that they were in the packet and I could also just say questions, but because which one that would be voting for us, it would be nice to just go over here, which is our video. Yeah, other than really. And it's Mark. Mark and Thursday at so let's start uh, with the well the, the first one is a, is, a, is a quick one because it was with Ron and all we did was to strengthen the language that we already have for barrier centers. So we don't need to vote on that because that motion was drawn. If you're interested in me giving you more special that, I don't want to waste your time. Oh, it's been withdrawn. It's been withdrawn. It's yeah, been with the second one. It's been withdrawn. The, the third is, in case you didn't watch the webinar, just, okay. <laughs> the, the third resolution was the, the Vermont School Bus Association fully support the timing that was done in the early Oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, remediation for toxicity and random mm -hmm. contamination is still, if it's open, the wrong one here. And the VSB have a case. So, when it goes into our book or the guidance that we give uh, in, when we are testifying, and you know, lobbying is just the language that says be it resolved. Via the with the Vermont legislature allocates funds to assist school districts with PPV and random remediation, including districts whose contamination was discovered prior to the legislation and respectively of the cost covered by the capital fund. And this obviously came from, as you see, came from Burlington as they are lacking in high school right now, but all of our schools have been tested right now. So a no brainer. It's going to be a major, major. Like it's with everybody on the whole basis, there's probably a piece of this. I think, I think we're in trouble yeah. down the road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, the guidance was for, you know. So I'll move that we uh, approve. Resolution three. Second. Second. Yes. All second. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Hearing no. The motion carries. We have that in the packet, right? This time you'll get it. Yes. So. And then the resolution number four. Yeah. I'm going to just read the, the result. The VSBA advocates that all rules, regulations, and policies and quality standards reporting requirements and laws regarding public space in Vermont must apply to any school that receives funds from the state of the fund for any reason or for any purpose. So I talked about it. I talked about it. It is uh, it, it is uh, it's a hot topic. And we're just having a side conversation with with Lori here. I, I, I was sharing my concern with this. Um, the, the, I don't know enough about this issue, and I recognize that, that we're a small state that we're sometimes rely on independent schools, and there may be cases where it's beneficial to have some exception from rules, regulations, the bureaucracy of, uh, of school. And so I'm just, I'm not, I think I'll have to see. Do you want me to share the concerns with me? Sure. Okay, thank you. Do we need yeah, to have so many? I, I think, so. yeah, I, I, I think before, yeah, we could have a moment of event. Do you want, who wants to move it? I move it. Thank you, Diane. And second? I'll second. Thank you. Discussion. So 
So we just heard from Kari. Anybody else? Has well, I hear what you, you're saying, Kari, but as a person who works in a public school that needs to be sure that it provides equal access and learning opportunities for all, um, it's critical that that expectation be present for all programs. And so, um, you, you know, I feel very strongly this is needed. Anybody else? I, I can't go in a complete, you know, rant about this. And I don't want to go in. I, I, I think it's important that everybody plays by the same rules, that everybody has uh, some responsibility when you're using public dollars, whether it's child care providers, where it is. Mm -hmm. The public schools, all of our kids deserve uh, good public education and the funds should be used fairly. Everybody should be able to, you know, respect a special ed education and not discriminate against, um, you know, we have found that even in programs for summer camps, you know, like there are things that they discriminate against that if you're using public funds, you should play. So that, that is just sort of a category. You know, and I wouldn't want our state, which is one of the few states that is funded more equitable than other than other states. Obviously, I did hear, you know, I, I chaired this committee, right? So I know that it is a hot topic. And part of the reason this topic, and I think it's completely transparent with you guys, part of the reason this topic is the uh, it's because of the recent decision of the Supreme Court about a, you know, a Religious schools mm -hmm. in the discrimination of it. They are using that piece as a discrimination. The U.S. Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that affects Vermont and Maine a lot. So it's something that we should pay attention to, and it could change the landscape of Vermont education. Right? How much? Not that I'm trying to bias your. <laughs> how much weight does? Uh, resolution. It's, it's really just yeah. guidance, like I said in my introduction. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's really all you. Do is, it, this is just guidance of how mm -hmm. we would advocate for something that the majority of our membership feel that is not important or against. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's guidance. So it's guidance if they are lobbying for laws or yeah that are going. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, policy yeah. laws. School board association has the legislature. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So when yeah, when you say a last about it, I think I think quite a bit in the legislature this is yeah, it will it will listen. It doesn't mean you know what I mean. A lot is like it's just it's just guidance, right? But it is really important to have that guidance because when we are asked to the question or testify, you need to have the support of the of, of the membership and it's and it's not just the Vermont School Association working on this. Mm -hmm. I think all of our all of the you know mm -hmm. Vermont Principal Association, for example, Association, mm -hmm. the NEA, every we've been having state meetings mm -hmm. about this issue. Mm -hmm. So just uh, yeah. do these same resolutions are being considered endorsement of resolutions is being considered by every school board that has a representative at yeah, so, so like each board gets a vote, and so I get to go with our voting yeah. number. Yeah, yeah. So, so all school boards, well, yeah. they don't usually have this many. Do no, we had more. Oh, okay. so that was not something that we found. We we had participated as the mm -hmm. participating for yeah. for oh, years. We weren't a member. We were in there. We yeah. I, I'm not, I don't want to need to that. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Thanks for being able to contribute and have a better. Yeah, and then we all that, but we did this last year too, but it was right after we all. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't recall this last. We did it. I know we, we, we did it. We did it last year. We did it last year. It was the first year that we did it. Okay. We did it. Okay. And then the other thing is that all of this is we give guidance to Ursula. You know, she's going to vote, but in and the board voted, but that doesn't mean that that's the decision that yeah. is going to happen tomorrow at three o'clock, right? Okay. It is. It is. And there will be a lot of attention during the resolutions. Some of them are usually more needed than others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the main thing is to get to the cockpit. <laughs> finish on time so that everybody can get together. After. <laughs> I think we're trying to make it sound so that more people will get to know that. You read your letter that came to you? 
Neil also you pay for the first, but you probably didn't get yeah, this. He was counting that not a lot of people were getting it. So we we had a motion and a second. So all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Moving to the, to the resolution carry. Mm -hmm. Moving to the next one, uh, the VLPA advocate for significant input from the school district quality standards <laughs> adopted by rule of the AOE regarding the business activities management and governance practice in the districts. So, uh, should we move it? Then move it and then go ahead. I'll move um, resolution proposal number five. Second. Yeah. Discussion. I have a question about the, the worded mm -hmm. advocates for significant input on the school district quality standards adopted as in already adopted or to be adopted. And, mm -hmm. and then how if it's already been adopted, how does the input get provided retroactively? Yeah, mm -hmm. so the secretary French uh, asked the DSPA to be involved in this standard. This is the first time that they would give us the waiting study required uh, changes on the and the uh, Act 1 and 2 of my. No, Act 173? No, mm -hmm. one seven, one seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm facing it right now in the images grab those. I'm pretty sure it's the it's the it's the, it's the funding format. So and so because of that, it's changes. So it's going to require part of that study that we're doing right now in our in our book. So Phil has been leading a group, and that invitation was sent to everybody that wanted to be part of this of this, of this group. So there's going to be some standards for boards of how they, they do. But you see their facilities. Right now, we are just doing school district standards for governance. Is what this group is working on, and then later on we need to. So what we're doing with this resolution, basically just saying, you know, just remember that it's important to have the voice of the school boards when you're doing this work. So not have something that just comes from AOE okay. that says this is how you should do it without getting input of the people actually on the ground. Mm -hmm. So just you know, and I I know that it feels a little bit afterthought because he somebody invited us, but because we're just working in one. Piece of it right now, it'd be important that we stay involved in all the pieces. My understanding was the work had started to before the other district input, and mm -hmm. like they want, we okay. don't know what happens politically and who's going to be in place. And so we want that continued assurance to the thing that they can actually do. But it's like a document. Yeah, that's the language I'm confused about because they, they, this, this was required by the law. And I'll, I'll send you the piece okay. of it. So it's like a formality? Because yeah, you know, it, 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 no, it's a key standard. It's quality standards already already not even the work right now. No, because this is not at quality standards. It's not an for boards to govern. I think, I think it's the phrase adopted by rule. Like, yeah. you think of it as a, it's oh, a bad, right. rather than like legislation. Yeah. Saying we want to do something that's typically adopted by rule, whether it's been adopted in the past or in the future. Okay, yes, that thank you. Perfect. Any more questions? Yeah. All those in favor, please signify by saying hi. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Mm. Hearing not the motion carries. Oh boy. <laughs> and then the next one is the uh, in the VSK supports universal school meals in the one school. The funding should come from a source other than the education fund. So this is a motion that we had back in our meeting in, in April, and we felt that this too that you have here is that we the committee felt that it was action that we should be taking. Well, I'll move that we support. Yeah, or kind of like 
I'll second. Discussion. I'm wondering what funding the source this is. Yeah, right. Right. Is <laughs> this the DSBA? Yeah, we do. But it's just the yeah. pass at the regular. To pass at the regular resolution, which means to pass it right now, and then we revisit it. I'm not sure thinking what other funding source. Well, the main reason is like if we come federal, like we had it right now, right? Yeah, you know, federal funding, but you know, just asking the legislature to be more creative, right? Because the feeding our students is not just part of the patients, that they could come. Yeah. It's really helpful. Oh, it's likely it would be the general funds. Yeah, so not, not, not just the, mm -hmm. yeah. The, the worry is that it will reduce the educational funds that are already. Mm -hmm. It seems like also, I haven't heard anyone discuss this, but like, in addition to being creative about where the money comes from, if, if it's a no on getting all the money, then it's get 90% of the money. Mm -hmm. No on that, it's get 80% of the money. But like, Shouldn't be a binary. Like we get all of it or none of it. Mm -hmm. We can't get all of it. Or all of it. Yeah, I, I totally agree. But we gotta start with a big picture yeah. because we're gonna end up share from the problem. So you know, and ideally this should be nationwide, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Any close? Jonathan, did you have your hand up and I didn't call on you? Sorry, I just. Yeah, the timing was bad. I, I kind of got it up there at the last second. But basically, um, I just wanted to say that, uh, I mean, many of you probably know that I've been advocating for universal meals for kids in Vermont for some time, well before, uh, you know, the pandemic. So it's very encouraging to see that. The state is finally having serious, con and the VSBA and others are finally having serious conversations about let's make this work because it's absolutely critical. It's not a want, it's a need, and it's a critical need. So that's what I'll say. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. So, and then the bylaws, I just wanted to be like that. Big overview, and you guys are okay with that. And mainly, what we did was uh, maybe did was to look at the language, make sure all of our thought that we saw that there was still some pronouns that were not right in the document. We cleared uh, our meetings. It said that uh, we, would, we would meet at least five times during the year. Uh, before it was a little unclear, mm -hmm. uh, so we made that more clear. And then in the last. Uh, in the last bit, part of the annual budget. Again, it's just make a, most of the changes was the, the, the finance committee spent some time in clarifying. So that language in yellow is what it's, what it's gonna stay. And if you go to the document, it's mostly, you know, a pronoun. So at least six times annually, mm -hmm. before it's at five. So it's just, you know, uh, there, there was nothing I, I promised you. Yeah, and I believe we were able to, to lead it too. Do you want us to vote on this? Yeah, yeah last year we didn't get guidance. I, I waited. Did and then <laughs> yeah. I was your voting delegate. I just had to make a decision, so I did. Okay. Yeah. Fun, but one comment is that I liked in page one how it wasn't specific about the goals, yeah. which is totally appropriate. But then it seemed that seemed to contrast with the detailed micromanagement of the budgeting process. Right? Why put all that in there? <laughs> it, I, and that's what I do for I just heard the finance committee that I like that. That was a, I, I was for that, but it doesn't seem to be. So, you want to measure? Yes, you want to do like a full slate. Yeah, just to approve the bylaws. I'll move that we support the changes. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Aye. 
and then I, I found my mouth, so I just want to put that. Okay. Um, so let's go back to her. Okay, so, okay, okay. Yeah, I need my dad. That's why I do that home. Just have <laughs> so, so for the personnel, we, we don't have any hires, so we're gonna well it's no, it's staff for no. Oh sorry, staff appreciation. Sorry. I know I was yeah, it's even staff appreciation. So it's so I um I feel like I can figure out my work. I think I need a little more coffee. <laughs> um, so it's that time of year where I think it would be helpful if we began to go to uh, staff meetings. And so I just wanted to lay that information out. In the past, we've had a rotation or you can sign up for one of the uh, staff meetings to attend to. The next steps would be I'll reach out to the leadership team and to ask them as to what dates over the next you know, month and a half would make sense they're all on Wednesdays. Um, the, the challenge, so to speak, for us is that they will be all in person before there were virtual ones, which made it a little easier. So, um, but these will be in person. So I will reach out to the principals to see about creating a Google Doc that you can sign up for. Um, and then one of the things we've talked about was similar to what Caroline shares in her newsletter which is just checking in with staff around what's something good, what's something hard, and what's something uh, that they need help with, just as informational uh, opportunities for us as, as a board member to be. And usually we're there at the beginning so that they don't feel as though we're impacting the whole meeting and that they have to be um, not, uh, you know, so it's our opportunity to share appreciation for board for the staff as well as then to hear information from them as well. I would say that it would then be helpful. Uh, in previously, it was Chris, Lindy, and myself that uh, were kind of like a little subcommittee. I would say anyone who would be interested in kind of brainstorming around additional staff appreciation or even gathering information to share back to the board after we've gone to these staff meetings would also be helpful. So. Um, if you could just let me know your interest, and I'll work with the leadership team to put out a Google Doc and share. I'd like to add just in the last couple of weeks, besides sports, because those are always in the paper. Berlin's craft fair was in the paper with a nice picture. The jamboree was in the paper of all the elementary, the author visiting each one. You know, just some real positive pictures and uplifting mm -hmm. of what's going on around that I think um, I think there was community or press about the clothing swap too but I don't remember where I saw that um and so I just think it's nice when we see those things happening in our schools and that they're in the paper because there's always sports pictures of sports but kind of nice to see other activities and I'm excited that we're going to begin our rotations of the community mm -hmm. forums at the different Okay, let's move into the. I just I found my keys then. It's driving me crazy that I was giving you the number of the long. So they charge the Gulf School District governance standards that we support on their a large project of the school district equality standards. Uh, the General Assembly charged the agency uh, of education at 1.7. So, so the agency is developing the standards to administrative making process, which is why we're trying to part. Now it's just like the same as like sorry, I'm not confused yet. I felt like that's really okay. Personnel. This can be really quick. Um, we do not have any tools for today. Um, the good news is that is because we are closer to professional level agencies for. So we special educators, although we um, believe that's good. Um, and then uh, in the re 
in the uh, packet, um, board had asked for some information about where we post um, mm -hmm. for our various questions. So there's a report in there. I'm happy to answer questions. Do you think any data like where people have learned the job when they have gone? That's a good question. We do get those metrics from schools, Greg, you know, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but I will ask about the others. I'm just wondering if it's kind of the end week one, the top school job costs. Um, so, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. 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 The same with the. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about schools? Schools are never crop. Yeah. Although it's so universally used. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you thought about advertising on speechpathology.com, which is the primary place that SLP get the required continuing ed that is um, also the uh, monthly actual journal for EOC is certified speech and metropologists, which would be a place to see. Often need we often need an ASHA member to connect us to that. I don't know. If you know <laughs> well, every single one of your SLP properties. No, we have a whole, a whole crew of them. <laughs> and we have just started where I'm working with SLP in mm -hmm. um, interns from the college. And we've just been in a lot of times. Well, so that's mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> one of the things that I would say, and Karen can speak more to this, but it has prompted our SLPs to work collaboratively across mm -hmm. the district to start to think about service delivery and how can we do that and how can we. Um, and that's a positive collaboration that can continue even when we are on the staff. So, and the thing having been SLP for the district in graduate school, working with the contracted SLP continuing very periodically, that, you know, that is a model that could be very attractive for somebody who's community. You know, there are, uh, now that I mean, there were no online programs in grad school, but um, it seems like that may be another way to attract somebody who has a level of skill that would allow them to be providing direct services under the supervision of a certified SLP, much like a CODA. Yeah, and even in the program now. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we do any um, outreach to universities and colleges? Certainly our local ones, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, have, we, have, we actually have a fair number of interns. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a pathway. A lot of our interns right now are studying. Uh, mm -hmm. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes. Um, and there's a lot of conversations happening at the state level around building better partnerships with our higher ed organizations for grow your own different mm -hmm. pathways. Mm -hmm. Those are not those are not the, gonna solve the immediate crunch, mm -hmm. but there's some really creative ideas and a whole lot of conversation about how to fund this mm -hmm. um, that I think will strengthen the partnerships with universities. Okay, good. And I know I've talked to you about this before. Vermont MBA is doing a they're doing a grow your own yes. in the Northeast Kingdom and they have I think it's like 30 or something yeah. participants in it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um it's been very popular up there. So absolutely. yeah, yes. Yeah. Connects for Julie. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be really helpful. She can to expand the program. Yes. Yeah, yeah, by growing our own can diversify. How many sources they have they is mean, yeah. Uh, yes. That's all I'm Okay, so let's move right into the finance committee. And I think because of the hour that we are already, I don't know if also the third bird conversation, so I don't know if too quickly, but uh, we had some information in the reports, uh, the reflection uh, at the beginning. Are there any questions for Suzanne? Uh, on the reflection? Okay. Mm -hmm. but, uh, it kind of piggybacks on the, the vacancy for growing our own yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're working with Robert Half to get a, a, a temp in the account stable position. So then we're going to move right on and please thank everybody in the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Laura, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'll get my check. Thank you. Hi. So then let's move into approved uh, uh, 3.24 dental, HRA, dental, for that. 
Um, um, I had a motion to start. Or did I do that? Well, well <laughs> Suzanne can kind of explain. There's a there's a little duplication <laughs> in these agenda items. So let's let's clarify that. So it'll be the same thing. Yeah, a two one and a two four are the same. Um, and somehow got on here twice. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Um, eight two two is probably where we should start with the pre qualification criteria, and then move into eight two three with the dental premiums, and then eight two four with everything that's budget compelling. Oh, okay. I, I was going by our. It was the finance. That's a by our finance. It can yeah, transfer yeah. from the finance committee that said yeah. transfer right correctly. Okay. So that's it, yeah. So I okay. So page 45 for yeah. So let's do that would be great. Yes. Yeah. So could I have a motion to recommend that the board establish the recommended qualification criteria? I move the board establish the recommended pre-qualification criteria that contractors must meet to be included on a selected list of pre-qualified bidders for the 2023 mechanic mechanical projects and the 2023 U32 parking lot and sidewalk replacement project. Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. So now, uh, this is a review of the approved 2023 dental. Yeah, is that okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. The dental premiums. I have a motion to recommend the board staff the dental. I did not. Okay, uh, I make a motion the staff recommends that the board set the calendar year 2023 dental insurance premium as follows single plan 552, two person plan 1080, family plan 1512. Thank you, Lindy. Could I have a second? Second, but clarification on the language. Yeah, you can take staff recommend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The board says. Yeah. The board is yeah. Oh, sorry. The board, yeah. Second. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Well, that sounded a little weird. <laughs> All those in favor? So second. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the motion carries. Yeah. And now I'm going to do the budget components. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So if you could go back to page 43, mm -hmm. that's really the metal that goes with yeah. the discussion. Just keep us on our toes. Right? Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, uh, page 49 is pretty much the same, but there was information in there that the finance committee really had a full discussion of, and we weren't going to discuss it. Yeah. Sorry, it's a little bit getting Can I ask a clarifying question? Sorry. Yes. Was there a motion that was supposed to happen um, on page 44? We have that's what we're on right now. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I move that the board direct staff to incorporate the indicated assumptions into the FY23-24 budget draft number one. Questions? I think we talked a little bit about that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I would be interested in considering reduced pricing or full price. Sometimes I didn't have full about it. Looking at the numbers would be helpful. Yeah. Um, the amount that uh, the meals were before the pandemic were three dollars for breakfast and four dollars for lunch. So it's a 75 cent increase of, because. Uh, my understanding is that the school district used to increase every, every year 25 cents. Mm -hmm. I was assuming that it would have happened had mm -hmm. universal meals not happened. Um, so, like a full amount or 
interested in bringing it back to the three and four, or what's the Sorry. pleasure? And that's sort of what the Cyrus Committee said too, like, you know, come, come, yeah. come back to us and, and, and give us uh, you know, announce what it would look like. <laughs> 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 I have a question about community connections funding. And if this is what community connections requested of us, or if this is what we're offering them. So community connections provide us um, their revenue, their expenses for current services. So this is a reflection of current services. Uh, and what we have been giving them in the past is $40,000. Um, the revenues that they project offset the rest of it. And so this is the amount necessary to run the current program to offset it the rest of the way. Has there been any discussion about giving more money to this program since this is for many families and essential? They also get money from the towns. Yeah. And this is... Again, these are the assumptions to bring you what we currently offer. Our conversations about whether or not we increase that would come as part of that That's second. But okay. it would be added to the menu. Okay. Does this have the cost of living increase? Is that basically what that extra 10000 is? Primarily, yeah. Running at the current schools that it's being offered at, which is not all by schools. Kids are being transported <laughs> sometimes a significant distance. How how far? And I think Dodi does Dodi still transport to Rami? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we will, we will have a more robust conversation about okay. this. Is there a specific guidelines that I don't want to go into? Right. We'll look at this question that we can have to the finance committee, but we gave them a lot of guidance to be able to mm -hmm. come back to us. Okay. okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it's a motion carried. I can take policy. Yeah, that makes sense. This is a way he was going to try to join us uh, remotely, but, but so I thought he couldn't. So, right. so, what we'll ask for is a motion um, to have the board affirm the policy work plan, mm -hmm. the policy cycle review, which includes essentially this year's work plan. So you saw an earlier draft conceptually, uh, the narrative part, which is the second, the, the page in the packet behind the chart, explains the three ways that the um, board would decide to review policy. One part is a cycle, one part is required and new things that you have to do, and a third is selected policy. Um, so you've seen that once before, and the um, I would not pay much attention to the months on the side. I, that I think will ebb and flow. I would focus on um, those are the uh, policies in those categories that um, the committee is recommending to the board. No. So we just we are making a motion. Or yeah, it's okay. okay. Yeah, we're making a motion. Yeah, okay. okay. I make a motion to affirm the work. Plan yes. for the policy and the policy review cycle. Mm -hmm. I'm using the word affirm because it can change. Right. The board can decide to uh, affirm the proposed draft of the policy review cycle. Policy review cycle. Yeah. Second. I'll second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not being in the room sometimes. <laughs> okay, so uh, Lindsay and Jonathan, uh, any more discussion 
Otherwise, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Very no, the motion carries. Okay. All right. And motion quality. So page 54 is the proposed goal for uh for the board for the year that the committee came up with. Um I'll just say the way I see it is the next step in our development of um developing and quality here. And um we have those steps in that process. We have we have two learning outcomes to define what it is we want. Uh then we spent two years creating a baseline understanding of how those play out in our system. Um, and then uh, for this year, we adopted a calendar by which we will monitor our progress towards the student learning outcomes. And, and, and now the next step is we'll figure out how we're gonna do that, how we're gonna monitor. And so we've got a lot to learn and we will use external resources to the extent we can. Turns out there's not a lot out there to learn from, but we'll, we'll learn what we can. And then we'll also develop our system based on what we decide is most important because there's a zillion things to look at, but we'll have to figure out what to prioritize and what to do. Anything to add to that? I'm looking for a motion. So, Are we accepting or Affirming. <laughs> I, I, I think we're making a motion. I'll second. I You're going to get Sorry, Jonas, is that okay with you, Jonas? We're just gonna sign it here. You can still send an email. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. But could I have a a motion for you? Uh, usually in this territory, but anybody can not. Okay. Always. I got a motion. Don't take away my thunder. Here. <laughs> I couldn't say the number. It's not gonna work. Uh, I make a motion to approve the mayor. 922 board order of 692,465 dollars 45 cents. Yeah, can you, can you repeat that? 
$692,465.45 to put on the one on my packet. I didn't add the two amounts up, which I usually do. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, where is it added wrong? It's no, no, so uh, okay, but so right. we're, we're signing them. Um, it's just no, it's just that the signature page doesn't reflect all the okay, way. Right. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah. And maybe we should. I think it's thirty days maybe long. So Ooh, oh, oh, no. No. can anybody have a signature page after the gen? Stop. There's like. Yeah, I might be wrong, but I think having one printed copy would be helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can, and then it yeah, just goes yeah. around at the beginning yeah. of the meeting. So I, I just updated yeah. here because it's not what I had in the computer or what you just read. It just had to, it didn't print it too long. Oh, yes, that's that. We did sort of acknowledge where a lot of practice with the hand signing of it. So we just thought I would bring it up today. Yes, I guess that they were always here. It's one month, I know. So they moved it. They moved it. And we second it. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get us out of here. We said it there. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carried. Okay, now it's tossed inside around. Maybe that way. This way. So, this is that for a Dalton calendar that we were talking about. And we have a uh, couple of questions. We were going to use this and then we could have been nice to meet it. We were uh, the idea was to use this so you go, you know, so that we're second November 16. You could even go as far as December 7, but we stay in November right now. Uh, the idea is to use this to guide us into future agenda items. Also, a question came up uh, as it for us uh, today and having some numbers also being fully remote uh, to the idea of having a couple of meetings. Remote and we can do that last. So let's look at the future topics that we had in November 2nd. It's what we're calling building a vision for building a budget, so it's all related to the budget. So that is our biggest. <laughs> and then we're, we're going to get that summary of the community mapping input to start that meeting. That's it. That was the idea. And we'll be in Berlin, and this will be. Design, even though this is a forum that will have breakout discussion groups, we will have a virtual option since the goal is to get as much engagement as possible. We'll organize it so that those that are on the screen will be their own breakout room um, and they'll figure that out. So, just so folks know the format. Um, and we are at Berlin. I think I just said that. Um, question about the timing. So, we at Ed Quality, I don't know if we landed on this, but we talked about giving ourselves a little bit more time to finish Ed Quality. Um, so this is penciled in as starting at 6.30. It could be at 6.15. Um, I don't know what your preference is. Is 6.15 on your drive to start? Does that mean Ed Quality starts at 5? Yes. Yeah. 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 So we have a full hour. Yeah, that's right. right. That was what our discussion was. You'll be closer. You'll get to Catalan, but I can't do it. That was at 5. Because yeah. I can't leave us until after the time is licensed. That's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Will be looked at in the context of the community mission part. But they're listed here twice. Or they're listed here separately. So the board knows what we're looking at. The one thing I don't see in here is any of the monitor report. So it's good an achievement for assessment system on that day. It, 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 on the on November 2nd. That's the quality. That's what that means. That's what yeah, it's, yeah, so that's the quality yeah. committee work. And, and we can move it to the side. Okay. Yeah. We can put it also on the committee side so that 
Yeah, you know what else I could probably is double check that those the things in blue are on the revised board monitoring calendar because they may be looked over from the yep. first one. So I'll confirm okay. that. Is it that what the committee's column is reports that we'll be getting or the committee is a, that one will I think ebb and flow a little bit. It's meant to mark things and we know in advance what a committee is doing. Um, so you'll see that like some of them policy probably won't have anything because you just approved this. You'll you'll already know what they're talking. Um, but we'll add the I probably okay. So that is actually it would help just to, to add, 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 add yeah yeah. yeah. And I was going to throw in twice before Monday because of Hunter Dragon. Why? Um, it is because of that. Um, they okay, just making sure we weren't putting twice in a row. That no, no, it, it was just um, it was to keep March um, off the mud. Off the mud. Nobody wants yes. to come to mud. Yes. And March. Yes. I don't do it. I do Last year we in that in that yeah mm -hmm. I I do okay. well there is that one in service do you remember that I well, I haven't been started that one <laughs> we were all started <laughs> there was us <laughs> we got out there in January 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 January. January. okay I ate some JRL yeah so sixteen. So next to next to that is like would the board be okay with having we're not going to go all the way to down to February but February also with having the November uh, sixteen uh, meeting uh, fully remote to get more people in and and just uh, be really helpful. Yeah. Don't are you okay with that? Yeah, Jonathan. Comes up, and then it would be a little bit easier than than hybrid, and, and then we're thinking of a February fifteenth too. But we can talk about that when it gets a little closer. I do wonder about the December twenty first one, mm -hmm. just because it's so yeah. close to it's during Hanukkah and before and right before Christmas break or winter break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we have a question to adjust the move the date or to make it virtual. Make it virtual. Then yeah. I'm wondering if there would be potential more types. Yeah. I, I'm 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 okay with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that would mean that in November and December we would be moving back to meeting in person on the first Wednesday and meeting remote on the third Wednesday. Yeah. And Which we would still have an in-person option, correct? Because legally don't we have to? Yeah, the named option we would probably, um, well, we had talked about the um, location being central office. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just a little easier to uh, not just sit there. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and we have a space. I mean, if, if yeah, any people, people on, on, we have the conference room, mm -hmm. we will have, we think, a uh, virtual, a pretty decent virtual setup if there are people on it. Yeah. Ideally, it would be to have all the faces in suit, right? Not to mm -hmm. do it. Right. We're not calling it a hybrid. You know, we would just have the yeah, right. location at central office for it to comply with the law, right. but mm -hmm. not to the public can join remotely. Too. So we would make that clear in the agenda itself since we've been going yeah. back and forth on making sure that that's so then those two days would not be a hybrid. So then how they would be virtual. Yeah. Yeah. So the public, but legally we have to have an in-person spot. But I mean, and there may be some who aren't able to join from their home. Right. So that gives them that option. Yeah. yeah. I might so I want to them. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell you that it's yeah. virtual, but you don't think that you can do the person. In the room. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let I me mean, just we're saying out loud if if we have to go to masking, say, the CPC community level goes to say hi. Yeah. Would we just agree to meet remotely at that point? Yeah. <laughs> That's I think it's a real possibility. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think what we have said is that we would adapt, right? As as as, as we go, we can level it as high as it sounds like we're in our right. 
So the next time that we are in person, if it's a third Wednesday, to the picture of the board, we need to pass the group. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. What they So that. So it will be later on. Oh, ten twenty eight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It just it allows us to. So the only changes right now are November sixteenth and November December twenty first are fully remote. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll you know probably do the same in February, but we don't need to go there yeah. right now. But February. If we have if we, really inclement weather and school cancellation, can mm -hmm. you refresh us on how that affects board meetings? If we were in person in the past mm -hmm. and there was this snow day, there was no meeting, okay. it, I don't think that we can afford that, especially for mm -hmm. the season. And now that we now mm -hmm. have a good yeah. remote, I okay. feel like we should still do remotely. It's a mm -hmm. thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we would change it. Okay. Sure. I out and I think that I would ask that if if it's even hinting that it might be potentially if we could shift to a remote. Okay. I mean, right. If it's gonna be late, if storm's hitting later and it doesn't affect school dismissal, there wouldn't be an early closure. And so but then it'd be it would be hitting us. Yeah. I see your I just yeah. So yeah, something yeah, yeah. to think about. We've got that down pretty well. Yeah. We would have to figure out yeah. who was here for the in person location. How to do it? Okay, someone. Yeah, and maybe central. Well, we can put there. Yeah, we can snowshoe it over on him. Well, on snowshoe. You know that. Yeah. 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 For reflection, I enjoy being in first. Yeah, I do too. We missed you, Jonathan and Jonas. Don't get it wrong. Thank you. On the big screen. Yeah, I'm just a big voice in the background with no face. Good night, everybody.